All right, Josh Pate, Late Kick Josh on Twitter. 24-7 Sports is where you watch his show. And uh, give it a thumbs up, just like we ask you to do for us. Subscribe, set your alerts, all those things with Late Kick Josh. What is up, Josh Pate? How are you today? We're doing scenarios. Is that what I walked in the back door to hear? That's all it is now. It's hypotheticals and scenarios, Pate. So, Lance, were you just doing the one that no one dares to do? Were you just broaching the, hey, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just asking hypothetically, what if Michigan loses? Because I did that in a car ride last night and got laughed at. You can't even do it. You can't even suggest it. What what you walked into was like, hey, we're going to talk championship weekend with Josh Pate. I cannot bring myself to talk about Michigan, Iowa. It just doesn't matter. But Pate, if that does happen, again, look, we've seen, I remember Stanford as a 41-point underdog beating USC in the Coliseum. So crazier things have happened. I think you can play this game 100 times. I think Michigan probably wins 100 times. But Let's just say that it happens. The Big Ten is at that point done. Yeah, they're out. What a, what a situation the Big Ten's built for themselves, by the way, where we're sitting here on conference championship weekend and saying about their title game, hey, if you play it 100 times, one team probably wins it 100 <laughs> times. But, you know, whatever. You know what I was thinking about? Uh, and in all seriousness, what I was talking about with someone last night was it seems like sometimes – There's the scenario that plays out that no one could have seen coming. So everyone plays out all the the hypothetical scenarios and then something happens. And in 2014, remember Ohio State goes on to win the title, but going into conference championship Saturday, they were not viewed to be in even if they won because they had a third string quarterback. And then they win 59 to nothing as an underdog. So that was so far off the realm of possibility that everyone just had their head like jarred and then they get put in. So what I was thinking about was with Alabama and a lot of these hypotheticals, if they beat Georgia, people are doing the Bama versus Oregon. Would the committee jump Bama over Texas, which I don't think they would. That's me personally. But here's what everyone keeps thinking. They keep thinking Alabama over Georgia means a close game. Now, it's a very low possibility. What if Bama just wins 35 to 13? Like, what if it was a convincing win over Georgia? And and then you've got the Bama-Oregon comparison. Like, I I think that kind of thing is the one that would surprise people the most or catch them off guard the most outside of Michigan losing. And um, I've I've never been a believer that this is going to come down to a Bama-Texas resume comparison. If Bama gets in, I think they're getting in over Oregon. And I, I've looked at those resumes like I've been confused at how they're behind Oregon to begin with. I agree. It's almost yeah. it, it's almost like our, our buddies, uh, college football nerds, they do a lot of number stuff, which just makes my head swim. But they put out some numbers the other day and they suggested, you know, it's almost like the committee thinks Oregon is better than Washington. They think they'll beat them when they have the rematch. So they've kind of already baked it into the profile whereas they don't think Bama is going to beat Georgia, so they haven't baked that perception in the profile. And that makes more sense than anything else that I've heard about this. I think what's fascinating is I think we all agree. We just said that Michigan's going to win, so we put them in. What's more fascinating, if Alabama beats Georgia in a more likely scenario, a really tight classic game, if I'm on, if I'm on my committee and I've said it for weeks, Georgia's in. I mean, Georgia is one of the four best teams in college football. I don't care if Oregon wins the rematch, if Texas wins, if Florida State wins. It starts with Michigan, then it's Alabama, then it's Georgia, and then take your pick. So using that logic, I I don't disagree with you. Okay, there's there's probably, outside of just a complete trouncing at the hands of Alabama, there's no scenario that could play out Saturday where I would look at it and say, all right, now I don't think Georgia is one of the four best teams in the country anymore. I get that. What I've always wrestled with is um, how do you, how do you define best? Cause you know, I do it every Tuesday night on Lake kick. I just put out power ratings and I couldn't care less what your record is. That's why I've had Oregon top four and Washington like 10th or 11th. And, and the point spread this Friday bears that out by the way. But I do think that there's a blend of on field results merit that has to mix in. Um, What I do think happened with Georgia over the course of this season that may greatly benefit them if this were to happen is their schedule ended up being a whole lot more legitimate than anyone thought it would be. Uh, Ole Miss, for example, is a much more quality win 
than you know people thought it would be in August. So maybe that is a, a Bama 27 to 24 win, and the committee looks and says, we can't keep them out. The problem is you may be putting, you may be having to justify putting them in over some conference champs, which is not unheard of. It's just that you have to be able to define that they're clearly above and beyond because if they're not, then conference championship comes in as the tiebreaker. Now, I don't have much of a problem. I don't think I would saying, yeah, I I think regardless, they're better than fill in the blank. I don't know that that committee always thinks the way that I think. Yeah, figuring out how the committee thinks is the hard part, right? I mean, that's like we always make these declarations. You're like, well, these are – it's a group of what is it, 14 people or 12, 14 people? Figuring out how they think, there is a track record, though. I mean, and the track record would benefit the SEC, Josh. I mean, there's there's a track record that tells you, like, I, I see these people on Twitter that say, like, no, 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 this will be their chance to get a national championship from another conference. I'm like, guys, step back and look at it. This this committee, whoever has been on it, has always, always defaulted towards, yeah, we really think the SEC is the best conference in football. Yeah, that's that's always one. That's always a fun thing. They do it with broadcast networks. Well, you know, fill in the blank hates fill in the blank, yeah. and they do it with the committee. Well, you know, the committee hates fill in the blank. Hey, l- listen, can anyone give me reasonable justification why the committee wouldn't want the SEC in? And don't just tell me they hate them. Like, like it's about dollars and cents. If you're going to be uh, conspiratorial. It's about dollars and cents and viewership at the end of the day. If anything, then that leads towards the SEC getting benefit of the doubt. I'd be worried if I were FSU. I'd be worried if I were Washington. I'd be worried if I were someone like that. Um, But look, the other thing, I've been going back and forth with Connell on this, which I don't recommend for anyone out there because it's a losing proposition. But I've been going back and forth with Connell on this. And it's like people say, well... I'm tired of the SEC getting benefit of the doubt. Uh, SEC always gets benefit of the doubt. They've earned it. Like, yeah. Who else would you give benefit of the doubt to? Well, the SEC, they always tout their strength of schedule. But their strength of schedule is better. It is more <laughs> legitimate. I don't, I don't know what you – you always talk about the sky being blue, bro. It's not purple. It's blue. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. And it's like it's just like banging your head against a brick wall. We've been fortunate, if you if you agree with the three of us, I guess, we've been fortunate thus far that the committee has seen it that way. Because can you imagine if the prevailing logic on that committee had been that all conferences are equal, you are what your record says you are, we would have had some disastrous final four results. What do they do with Ohio State? I know everybody, including Alabama fans, want to see Ohio State drop to eight or nine. But it's hard to believe, based on the way they lost, that they would drop that far. Yeah. You know what I'd do um, if it were a committee of one? What I would do is I'd put Ohio State four, and they'd basically be a placeholder. And I'd have, like, Bama, Oregon sitting just outside, sitting at five or six. And what I would do – without saying it out loud, as I would say, all right, Ohio State's about to hold this spot here. And then one of these teams is taking that spot and we're going to wipe the slate clean and we're going to go resume comparison uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And whoever has the best one, that's who's going to jump in there. That's the way I do it so that no team like a Bama or like an Oregon or like a Texas has the predetermined number four spot in people's minds. Because if we put a team there, and then you jump them in the final rankings, then you have to justify why we dropped this team and why did this team jump over this team. I don't know if the committee, by the way, I was thinking about this last night. I don't remember them ever having ties, like tie for fifth, tie for sixth. I just do three-way tie there. I put Bama, Texas, Oregon, three-way tie at fifth and and keep Ohio State at fourth and say, you guys have at it. One or two of you are going to get these spots depending on what happens in front of you. Uh, Is this unethical? Of course it is. But I've never even heard that word thrown around with the committee to begin with. So ethics left the room a long time ago. And and here's the point. This committee, Josh Pate is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline, 24-7 sports at Lake Cake. Josh, you know, we were discussing this yesterday where the committee doesn't want to set that precedent. Uh, There is no precedent. This committee, it's it's a different game next year. It's a 12-team playoff. So... There is no precedent setting. This is the last time the committee will ever do this. So precedent doesn't really matter if they wanted to do something like that, like a five-way tie. Yeah. I, look, you're thinking the way I'm thinking, which in and of itself is a dangerous sentence, Mr. Brown, so I'd be careful, especially around the holidays. Dangerous, <laughs> yes. dangerous proposition. I don't really know what you have to lose. And secondly, like, who, 
What's the oversight committee? Who do they have to go before and right. justify their rankings? It really is nothing. They they have to pretend like they're handing it to Reese Davis in real time. And Reese Davis has to pretend to be surprised at reading it. And that's it. That's all. That That's the end of the ball game. I have had real I've had I've had a struggle over the last two weeks because I've made it a point to watch the actual show, which I never do. And I've listened to Boo Corrigan come on afterwards. And it's so obvious that they they reverse engineer his answers to try and fit what they've already predetermined to be what they're going to spit out as rankings. And he's so ill-equipped to give like informed data based logical explanations for it. It, you're told that it's about raw data and numbers. And then he says stuff like, well, you know, in second halves on non rainy days, they've looked well above average. And that's really <laughs> what bumped them over the top for us. Like, what are we talking about? Just have a computer spit AI at me over that. Okay. Let's just play with the two team SEC hypothetical. Okay. <laughs> let's say that Georgia does get in with a close loss to Alabama. And let's say that Florida State wins, Oregon wins, Michigan wins, Texas wins. I think Florida State and Oregon are out. I think Michigan and Texas are in. But my question to you, if Alabama and Georgia both get in with Michigan, obviously, as your number one seed, how would you pair one, two, three, and four? Do you go on and say, because to me it would be a little unfair for Michigan to have to play Georgia immediately, dropping Georgia all the way to four. Do you put Bama at two, Georgia at three, and then Texas at four, and we go on and see that Georgia-Alabama rematch immediately? No, I'd have Georgia at four. Look, hey, you, you and I can talk about how Georgia would be the best team that could face Michigan all we want to or the, the toughest team that could face them. If you're the committee, you're not supposed to think like that. If you're the committee, you're just supposed to look at your blind resume and criteria. A fact is Bama would have a conference title at that point. Texas would have a conference title at that point. You only got one team in that mix that doesn't have a conference title. You put them at four. And look, hey, Michigan got the easier draw last year, dude. They got TCU served up to them. And they couldn't get the job done. So I really don't have much time uh, quibbling over which the more favorable matchup for Michigan should be. Like, if you're, if you're the best team in the country, go win. Just get the job done. Yeah. And secondly, what, what do we want to see more? Do we want to see uh, Bama-Georgia just rematch in the first round? Like, is that what we're trying to pitch people? I guess they would want to see that over a title game rematch. So I'll, um, I'll backtrack. We just wasted 15 seconds of oxygen there. I don't really care about that, though. And I don't – even though they do, they'll tell you they don't. But even with them secretly caring about it, I don't think you could put Georgia any higher than fourth in that scenario. All right, here's Josh Pate, Late Kick Josh on Twitter. You can see him on 24-7 Sports uh, on YouTube. Just give it a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed to his work and uh, follow everything he does. He's always great with us on the show. We will see you in Atlanta this weekend, my friend, I assume. I didn't ask you if you're going to be there, but I assume you would be there. You're a good Southern hey. boy. Vegas Friday night and then red eye to Atlanta. Saturday. Oh, wow. How about that? You'll right. be well rested. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll wake you up for the game. We'll wake you up right at kick. Is that good? I will. Uh, I will see you guys there five minutes before kickoff. Yes. All right. See you, Pete. Thank you. Josh Pate with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. 